Assalamu alaikum to some of you and peace to the rest of you. Um, at the end of the day, um, you can disagree with people if you don't disrespect them. And at the end of the day, the only time to go disrespecting people is when they have made a clearly immoral choice and knowingly so. And um, I wanted to give everybody due credit even if I hate them. And I rarely hate people. And in order to give people due credit even when I hate them, it takes practice because uh, we are humans and we're biased. So what I learned is that it is much better to instead of always trying to credit those whom you love and disparage those you hate, it is better to love those who deserve the most credit. It's easier. And to bond with those who deserve the most credit and to, uh, well, to stand against those who deserve the most disparaging. And then if you do hate them well, at least you've hated them for something that they've done and for the absence of the good that they've done. So, in a sense, you shift your loyalties based on morals instead of trying to shift morality based on your loyalties. And this being said, um, at the end of the day, I understand that Tommy Sotomayor has been slugged out. And in all honesty, uh, if I was a black woman, I would probably want to shoot him instead of slugging him. But I also want to point this out. We have to see Tommy Sotomayor can disagree with black women, but you can't disrespect people when they've been broken and traumatized and they're, they're addressing this. So Tommy can say, look, black woman, I can't agree with this. And you have every right to not agree with the stuff we're doing. And Tommy is very astute when it comes to how to analyze relationships between men and women in general. In that regard, there's nothing to discredit him for. When he talks about how it is that um, society has taken certain aspects of feminism too far so that women can have all the standards they want and men aren't supposed to have standards, the pendulum swung too far the other way, he's absolutely right. When he starts talking about black women, he could talk about disgraces but he can't sit up here and just categorically call black women black bitches as he has done before and not get punched out. I would advise, because see, I will never be that close to him physically to slug him or to whisper in his ear any words of advice. I won't be close enough to him physically to, um, to react at all in his, in his presence to whatever he has done or said, but I know that he and Tariq Nasheed have had an argument. I couldn't listen to it. It started and I just couldn't go any further. Um, I know that somebody punched him because he said so. And I know that this happened a long time ago. All of these things happened a while back. But what I'm going to ask is this. The next black person to react in his face to anything he has done or said, <laughs> whether you slug him or not, it's not really my business, but whether you slug him or not, please say to him, you can disagree if you do not disrespect people. And even if you disagree with the things that black women have done, you cannot simply just disrespect them categorically because we have all been traumatized. You, me, them, and all of us. And this is what I want to be understood. Unfortunately, when you're dealing with trauma, on a personal level, you first have to know that you've got the trauma and then you gotta go through the time and the training to get over it, if you can get over it. It's the same thing with a set or block of people. We know that we've been traumatized and we've passed it on down generationally. And I, nobody would disagree with him when he says we can't pass trauma down in the name of culture, that he's right about that. We overreact sometimes and overdiscipline our kids for things that are very normal for children. And we do it in the name of culture. We don't play that. Okay? So in order to call ourselves good parents, we have to overreact and overdiscipline kids. If he, addressed, if he were to address something like that, he would be absolutely right. 
But the last thing I'm going to ask one of you, if you ever see him personally and you're able to whisper in his ear or slug him, and I prefer that you whisper in his ear, is to tell him, even if you are going to say something about black people, don't you ever let white folks off the hook again for what they did and their part in this. Maybe two other ethnicities have gone through what we've gone through and they didn't go through it for as long as we did. So there's no reason to sit up and compare us to others, even though we can be personally accountable. There's no reason to sit up here and act like we didn't go through what we went through. And there's no reason to sit up here and act like there's not a system out there that is against us. Let them know, because I'm not going to get a chance to. I escaped the plantation. I hope to stay away from it. And um, for those of you still on it, I do hope that one day we're able to get over this trauma. But see, when he holds us accountable, which is okay, there's nothing to argue with him about because frankly, black folks, I would have loved seeing how social media has been able to put more conscious black people in touch with each other. I would have loved to stay there among you and maybe try to do some things that would help behind the scenes and vocally advise you publicly, but I can't. I had to leave the, the plantation because a lot of the slaves on the plantation didn't want to admit that we are still slaves and it is still a plantation and we're still being traumatized, which is why we are still acting the way we act. That we are too easily divided, even as we have become conscious. I couldn't stay on the plantation because what happens when your, your mind is beginning to free itself and then you tell your people, your minds, our minds are still trapped and in chains. What do they do? They interrupt you. They bicker. They don't just disagree, they bicker, argue, and they interrupt, and they usually interrupt when you're right and they are wrong. And we're terrible about that. Disagreeing is normal. But we still disagree like infants. We still disagree like neurotic children that are damaged. And that the one who's wrong is usually the one doing the most interrupting. It gets disgusting after a while because you can love your people and still have to turn your back on them. Now, I had to do it geographically, but not psychologically. I was forced to. But for those of you that are still there, please, please remind him you can disagree, but you cannot be disrespectful. And you cannot ever let our oppressors off the hook for their part in this. I hope that this has been a benefit. Assalamu alaikum.